Hello everyone, I guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with a Turoth Slayer Guide for Old School RuneScape in my endless adventure to make as many Slayer Guides as possible. So hopefully you guys enjoy, if you do, make sure to leave a like. Also, I have other links that you can support me at down below, and I'd appreciate that greatly. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So to start, should you kill Turoth? In my opinion, it's a maybe. Uh, there's not really a clear-cut answer here. It is profitable, so people will enjoy that if you're kind of a lower or med level that is bored of Slayer because you never make any money here you can at least take home a little bit however the xp here isn't great i would even argue to say maybe bad because you have to use leaf bladed weapons or broad bolts so there's going to be a little bit of a dps decrease there ultimately up to you i'd say unless you're like a high level player that's really going for xp it's probably worthwhile to do because you're not going to want to skip anything that you don't enjoy just the slightest the only requirement that you're going to need here is 55 slayer to be able to kill them beyond that i mean decent melees would be helpful but you can't save spot them and they're not too dangerous so you'll be all right Turoth are weak to essentially everything in particular for melee stab is the best option it's pretty close and across the board you shouldn't have to worry too much Turoth attack with a melee based style and their max hit is a 10 so little up there but nothing too bad for drops that you could expect from Turoth a heart clue is a 1 in 128 drop if you're on a Konar task there is a 1 in 110 chance of getting a Konar key a leaf bladed sword is a 1 in 385 drop only worth 40k but useful if you're an iron man that desperately really needs it and the average gp per kill is about 1.4k so nothing crazy but it's a pretty penny for a med level slayer monster for the melee gear we have a few different options down here on the left hand side it's kind of the med level base setup that i would go with and that just progresses up to the right hand side which is kind of the end game setup that i would go with here the main notes you're going to need a leaf bladed battle axe, sword, spear, something of that sort, a leaf bladed weapon, or broad bolts to be able to damage them in the first place. Along with that, strength bonuses and defense is going to be what you want to go for, so that is what I have prepped for here. It is pretty far away from a bank, so I definitely like to prepare for a more defensive based task. Alternatively, you can use the leaf bladed sword and spear like I mentioned before. Not as good as the battle axe, but still gets the job done. And for other gear options, if you're a lower med level player that doesn't have what was listed there dragon chain body is a nice option for a plate body that's a little bit more defensive or you can switch to rune or granite depending on what you have the money and defense levels for and for anyone that isn't feeling like using a defensive based setup some prayer options here monks robes initiate or proselyte depending on what you have in terms of quest completed proselyte being the best monks robes being the worst but personally i wouldn't really recommend it here like i mentioned before i think a defensive setup is better but if you're a low level that's just getting absolutely shredded here and you want to make this task a little easier it would be an option and then a couple range setups here there is a nice little safe spot that you can use i don't recommend range but but if, again, you're feeling like you're getting dealt too much damage, it is a good option. Or if you just like to train range in general, it is a possibility. Now, in terms of the sweaty rates, what you could get if you're just absolutely going ham here, the Slayer rates are going to range anywhere between 15 to 25k XP per hour, which in terms of Slayer isn't very good. And 15ks even with base 70s in your combat. So it can, of course, even be lower than that, which isn't great. But in terms of the melee base rates, anywhere from 60k to 100 and 5k if you're at the med to higher levels of course can tend lower than that but the highest rates here are not anywhere near close to some of the other slayer guides that i've been doing so it's not great but again the money you make and just an accessible task that isn't too difficult at this level is worth doing as far as how to get there in the inventory we're going to want to get to the relic cave but for the inventory got all the items listed there a rune pouch is nice for some high alks you don't need it but you can bring it if you'd like a slayer ring is how i'll be teleporting Reporting there an herb sack is something that I would definitely recommend because there are just a ton of herbs that get dropped here so that's the most important in my opinion I've teleports the house to be able to get out of there at the end some super combat potions and a bunch of pineapple pizzas I'm a big fan of pineapple pizzas they heal more than a shark but you have to eat them in like two different slices but you can eat them really quick and they're actually cheaper than sharks too so I'm a big fan of those especially at a place where you're so far away from a bank I think it's better to go with you know a little boost in food you can also bring a bone crusher and a gem bag if you would like personally I, I wouldn't really do it but up to you for options to get to the relic of slayer cave the best one is going to be the slayer ring you can make slayer rings after you get 75 crafting and unlock the ability with slayer points or you can buy them from the slayer shop personally i wouldn't do that but if you have the ability to get here 
with that I would. The second best is the fairy ring with the teleport code AJR. You will need fairy tale part two to be able to use this method. The third best is the relic at house telly. That's a little bit to the west and you can either have your house located there or you can use a redirection scroll on a house teleport tab. And then finally the most accessible option is the Camelot teleport. That will put you pretty far to the south and then you'll have to run north. You can either use the agility obstacle up the middle that is 48 agility or you can run to the left and make your way around. For the Camelot telly you'll either need 45 magic or a teleport tablet that you can buy from the Grand Exchange. And those are going to be the methods to get there. And once you've made your way here let's go ahead and head on into the cave. It is a little bit of a walk once you're in here so you're not all the way home but uh, basically you're just gonna have to navigate on through. There is an agility obstacle right here that requires 81 agility or you could boost with the summer pie from 76. Personally, I'm, I'm one level off, so pretty depressing. I'm gonna have to make my way around. But yeah, just follow this little loop and you'll just find some rock slugs, some cockatrices, and there will be some pyre fiends up here. Once you've seen the pyre fiends, you're almost home free. You gotta run through and there are some basilisk up here as well. There's an agility shortcut right here that requires, I believe, 62 agility. Yep. So you can access that with 62 or 57 and a summer pie. I'd imagine most people are probably going to have that. If not, you're just going to have to walk around a little bit more uh, right by some jellies, and that's about it. Once you've made your way on in here, though, it is uh, pretty easy. They don't auto-attack you, which is pretty annoying. I think that's kind of a downside of the task as well. But go ahead and just pot up and get to work. As long as you have some somewhat defensive gear and you're using super defense potions, you shouldn't get torn too much. Like I mentioned before, they do drop a lot of herbs, so just get ready for that. I definitely recommend the herb sack if you have the ability to bring one of those it is going to be game changing on this task the high alk runes i mean they're nice if you're actually going to be here a long time and can have sustainable trips where you're just here for <laughs> endless amounts of time but most people i don't think that's going to be the case so that's more high level i'd say if you're a med to low level don't worry about a room pouch and the pineapple pizzas are great in my opinion they're really quick to eat like they take two bites but they go really quick just like you saw right there so 22 hp per i'm a big fan and then finally if you're needing to save spot this is going to be the way about it just a tad some of the Turoth that are down here and you'll be able to just stand right down here in this corner. Even if they come around to the west side of this, they'll still get pinched on that tile right there. So you'll be fine either from this direction or from that direction. And that's how I'd go about safe spotting it. So yeah, that is it for the Turoth guide today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Any guides you want to see from me, any videos you want to see, let me know in a comment down below. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this as soon as I go live, make sure to subscribe. Also other links you can support me at down below would appreciate it greatly. Got a Patreon down there that you can check out and also have a twitch stream that i'll probably be live on later tonight with some more hardcore iron man endeavors and i'd appreciate it greatly if you checked it out but with that said hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace